This video is sponsored by Motion VFX. Apple's $399 iPhone SE is officially here, and customers who pre-ordered last week should be getting their brand new phone starting today. And so in this video, we're gonna go over what's new and everything that you need to know about the latest iPhone SE. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. Most of you know this already, but for those who have no clue what an iPhone SE is, Here's the quickest history lesson that I can possibly give you. The original SE launched in 2016. It featured an older iPhone 5-like body style, but had upgraded internals to match the 2015 iPhone 6S. This was Apple's way of giving users a phone that was powerful enough to hang with the flagships, but left out a few key features in order to reduce cost. Fast forward to today, and we have that exact same concept this time with an iPhone 8 body style, but with iPhone 11 internals with the new A13 Bionic chip inside. Everything else in terms of look and feel is just gonna be the same, minus the now centered Apple logo and the removal of the iPhone text on the back. And all three models will have a black front instead of some models that would traditionally have the white faceplate. You get the same 4.7 inch LCD display, touch ID, all glass design with wireless charging capabilities, and a single camera system located on the back. Now, even though the camera looks the same, there are a few changes going on here to give users a better experience. Of course, we don't really know for sure if it's actually any different, at least in terms of hardware, for the camera itself, or if it's the same as the 8, but with Apple's updated software and A13 Bionic chip, driving some better image processing to give it that upgraded feeling over older hardware. I'll let you be the judge with the very few pictures that I was able to take with my limited time with the iPhone SE. In the next week, we will do a full camera comparison between the iPhone 8, the 2020 iPhone SE, and an iPhone 11 to kind of better gauge where the iPhone SE might kind of fit in terms of camera performance. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. Now, in terms of video recording, you do get 4K video up to 60 frames per second with the rear-facing camera. And it does look really, really Really good, especially for only $399. It's easily the best in its class, in my opinion. It looks crisp and it's incredibly stable for any smartphone, really, let alone at that price point. The front facing camera is still limited to only 1080p at 30 frames per second. For me, the iPhone SE is all about value. What exactly are you getting for the starting price of $399? Or maybe we can focus on what you're not getting to sort of shorten up that list you won't be getting a big phone, or at least not big by today's standards. You'll have some very big top and bottom bezels. You'll have build quality that won't kind of feel as premium like something like an iPhone 11 Pro. There's no face ID, but instead you'll get the familiar home button with touch ID. There's no extra telephoto or ultra wide lenses, and there's no night mode. Personally, I think none of these are huge trade-offs if you're coming from something older than an iPhone 8. Even if you have an iPhone 8 and you're looking to upgrade, while it might seem minor because there won't be a lot of physical differences, there's enough here to warrant an upgrade in my opinion if you're looking to stick with this same design, size, and price. The most important thing that you're getting from an iPhone SE is the fact that it's an iPhone. A $399 iPhone that's powerful, runs iOS 13 really well, and it has iMessage and AirDrop and all of the things that keep iPhone users in the ecosystem. If you're looking to get your child their first smartphone, this would be my recommendation. If you want a really solid device that should definitely last you a few years with timely software updates and good performance, this is what you should get. It's not fancy, but it's still, at the end of the day, an iPhone. I do wanna point out that even though the iPhone SE starts at $399, I actually wouldn't recommend picking up that 64 gigabyte base model. If you can swing the extra $50 to double your storage to 128 gigs, I would highly, highly recommend doing that. Also, if you don't know what color option to go with, proceeds from the product red model, which is the one that you see here, will go towards COVID-19 relief, so just something to keep in mind. There's also a black and a white model. The white model specifically is really cool in my opinion because of that white back and the black front. It gives it that stormtrooper kind of vibe. 
Either way, if you don't care about the latest and greatest design or flashy features that you may or may not use, and you just want an iPhone that's gonna be reliable and is capable of taking some pretty decent photos, this is definitely the phone to go with. Of course, I would love to know your thoughts on the iPhone SE. Did you pick one up? Did you pre-order one? Are you thinking about something else? Let me know in the comments down below. Before we end today's video, I do want to give you more information about today's sponsor, Motion VFX. Now, if you haven't heard of Motion VFX yet and you're a content creator, well, buckle up because your life is about to get a whole lot easier. You might have seen some fancy animations or graphics popping up throughout most of our videos. And as much as I would like to say that I created those beautiful transitions or animations myself, I did not. Work smarter, not harder, with over hundreds of different plugins and templates from Motion VFX. They are hands down the best resource for Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion plugins and templates. Installing a plugin is as easy as one click from the Motion VFX menu bar app, and customizing the plugins all takes place directly inside of Final Cut Pro. Just drag and drop your effect or transition into your timeline and edit from the inspector. It's that easy. If you want a recommendation on what plugins to check out, definitely start with the M Bundle Vlogger. These are the perfect set of resources for adding in some awesome intros, pop tags, social media animations, adding in pointers for tutorials, and much more. Honestly, I use these plugins every day and they are a huge tool for helping me create content faster and easier. For more information about Motion VFX and the M Bundle Vlogger, click the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.